Hi, I'm Jack, the product manager for Cara VR, a suite of plugins for Nuke for dealing with 360 video VR material covering everything from stitching through standard comp workflows to headset review. In this video, we're going to run through stabilizing a 360 shot both as a post process for existing stitches and during stitch for when you're working purely within the toolset using this shot from the mission courtesy of New Deal Studios. We'll deal with tracking and camera tracking of 360 material, and this builds on earlier tutorials for stitching using Cara VR. This stitch is one we built a stitch for. We figured out a rig template in the camera solver up here. And here I've actually rendered out this preview stitch and read it back in. If we take a look at what happens in this preview stitch, it's looking all right, but you can see how there's a lot of camera movement. We're gonna to need to stabilize this for a more pleasant viewing experience and to reduce the risk of nausea when watching. There's a number of ways we could achieve this. First, we're going to use Nuke's built-in camera tracker in conjunction with CaraVR's C Spherical Transform and C Metadata Transform nodes. We're going to use C Spherical Transform to track a rectilinear subset view from our stitch, in this case the front-facing bit. This will work in this kind of case and where you've been delivered a pre-stitched result and don't have access to the original source files. The alternative is to actually track one of the original source views that goes into the stitch, which can work equally well if you have them available. C spherical transform will be covered in more detail later, but amongst its many features, it can be used to rotate a lat long image. So if I add it to our preview stitch and rotate around a bit, you can see what's happening. It can also be used to transform from lat long space to the conventional rectilinear space, like so. Why is this important? Well, the camera tracker was built for rectilinear footage. If you feed in a lat long directly, it's likely to go a bit nuts. Instead, we're going to get a rectilinear forward facing view out of our preview stitch. I'm going to set the focal length on the output tab to 10mm. I can then also set the output size. So by default, C Circle Transform is trying to keep the width the same, which means it's going to be quite a large frame. And because we're camera tracking, we don't really need that level. This only has to give us rough rotations after all. So for speed, I'm gonna crank this right down to a 0.2. And then let's add ourselves a camera tracker. We will set the focal length because we know it to be 10 mil. And we've got 36, 24, just like in the film back on the circle transform. And at this point, we'll then start tracking. I'm not gonna go through camera tracking in any detail, Check out the standard Nuke tutorials if you're not familiar with it. For now, I'm going to stop recording and I'll be back in a minute when this is done. Okay, so we've tracked. Now we're going to solve. So as normal, this is trying to fit a camera model to the motion within the scene. In this case, just using that front-facing section of the frame cut out by a C spherical transform. And now we've solved, we can see that with the enabled export menu, we get a couple of extra options that you don't normally get inside of Nuke. And these are because Cara VR has added them. So C spherical transform and C metadata transform, both of which are configured to remove the rotation seen in the camera. So let's export a C spherical transform. And by default, this has been hooked up to the upstream node, but of course this is gonna be outputting rectilinear. So we wanna stabilize the overall lat long. So if I hook up on the output here and close this, you can see as we jump around, that horizon line is a lot more stable than it was prior to C spherical transform. This is really handy, particularly if you bought in a stitch from a different stitching package. But in this particular case where we've got the stitch inside of Cara VR, we can actually go one step better. And this is where C metadata transform comes in. With C spherical transform, the output rotation was set up and configured so that it actually filtered our preview stitch for us. So that was actually applying a single filtering hit on top of the original stitch. With C metadata transform, rather than actually filtering the image, what this does is it edits the metadata found in the stream between the camera solver and the stitcher. So this has to be dropped in between those two nodes. And what this then means is that when we look at the resultant downstream stitch, the rotation from the stitch stabilization will be applied to it. And that means you only have one single filtering hit for the entire stitch process. 
And on top of that, our pre-rendered before and afters. And here we're looking at the before on the left and the after on the right. As you can see, we've locked down the horizon line and the overall orientation of the camera, but just like with anything else in Luke, you could dive in there and maybe lock down one axis and not the other, or apply an expression to remove high frequency noise but keep low frequency, that kind of thing. In a similar fashion, we could alternatively employ the Cara C Tracker node. So we'll just add this in here. This is a feature point tracker similar to Nuke's built-in one, but that actually understands lat long space. Because of this, feature points will actually track from left to right when it crosses over the edge. So if I add the track region and then drag this around, you can see how my sniper preview is actually in rectilinear space, whilst this overall view is obviously my lat long. So now I can actually drag this and as it goes across the edge, you can see I'm mapping back onto the other side. And if I were tracking a feature point that crossed that edge, it would follow along with it. Just like Camera Tracker, this is also able to export C spherical transform and C metadata transform nodes. But in this case, as well as being able to stabilize, it can also match move. So it can actually add in the rotation seen on a lat long to some third party element you want to integrate. Now using this is a lot more manual a process than with something like Camera Tracker, but it does allow you to get really precise with what you're tracking. Just like in Nukes Tracker, which is well worth uh, watching some tutorials on before you start on this, we have to pick which points contribute to which particular aspects of the resultant transform. So in the case of the base tracker, you might pick a couple of points for position and transform and a couple of points for rotation. Obviously with lat long space, you end up with pan, tilt and roll parameters and picking which points you want for pan, tilt and roll can actually be quite tricky. So let's say we want to track and stabilize this particular shot again. So pan and tilt are our overall transform-esque parameters. So let's find a good feature point for that and we'll go back to the first frame for this. We'll add ourselves our main pan, tilt position, like so. Just nudge it a bit in here. That looks like it should track all right. Just like with the other tracker, you can define the region, uh, the overall size of where it's going to search, that kind of thing. Now to stabilize rotation, we're obviously going to want a second point to handle roll. So I'll add a new point, let's say over here. And toggle on the roll position for it. Now, as you can see, when I did that, I ended up getting this line drawn between the two points. And this connects the pan tilt average position, which in this case is on track one because there's only a single point in the average, to the roll position. And it will color it depending on how good the roll calculation is likely to be. This doesn't tell you how well it will track. Instead, it tells you how well you can actually stabilize this shot based on the positions you've picked. So for example, if you imagine in a 360 world, you pick a point directly front of you, and then you, for the roll position, you pick a point directly behind you, you're actually not going to know what the rotation is because both of those points lie on a single axis. Instead, you want to pick a position which is 45 to 90 degrees offset from your initial pan tilt position. And of course, you'll want it to be at roughly the same depth so you don't get parallax coming into the calculation. Let's try moving this around. You can see as we're getting closer to our 90 degrees position, we're getting a better set. Though obviously here, we're not going to have as good a track because there's not much in the way of a feature to track off. So let's drag this a bit further around to our tree position here. There we go. That looks like it should give us a pretty good calculation there. And now I'll track both of these forwards. Now we can use all the normal tracker controls, so we can cancel it and we can reposition and we can keep an eye on it to make sure they're tracking sensibly, that kind of thing. Let's stop then. Now we could export, as before. Also, the node itself can actively filter the image as a stabilizer or a match move, so it's basically behaving like a C spherical transform internally. 
And you also get these really useful bits of data out, which are average pan, tilt and roll positions, which we'll cover in more detail in the upcoming workflow videos. That wraps this section up. We've looked at stabilizing stitches, both during stitch and as a post process. We've used camera tracker and Cara VR C tracker to source the data, and we've applied it using C spherical transform and C metadata transform.